Hey guys, welcome back to Razor RC. Um, today we got another review for you. And I thought I'd review. Boom. TLR 22.4 2.0. 10 uh, scale electric four wheel drive buggy. Um, I've had this buggy for about, uh, oh, I'd say about five months. I think I got bought in Halloween. Uh, my local hobby store was having a sale that day, so I picked one of these up. Uh, it was my first four wheel drive buggy, and you know, I was looking for something kind of different. Uh, something that wasn't that expensive and something that performed well and this buggy pretty much you know fit the bill um, it was uh, you know considered one of the best buggies at the time probably still is and um, you know it's it's a belt drive um, vehicle um, that's you know kind of different in the marketplace so uh, I thought I'd do a review of this buggy today and I hope you enjoy this um, so the first thing I want to talk about was is kind of an overview of the vehicle. Uh, as mentioned, four-wheel drive buggy. Um, let's kind of take this thing apart. It's got a very unusual design, I would say. Um, you know, kind of harkens back to uh, the double X4, which was Losi's first four-wheel drive buggy. Um, so it's got a really unusual layout. Um, it's got three belts. Um, one for the front, one for the side belt, and one to the rear. Uh, it's got the motor in the middle. It's got kind of this long uh, steering link here. Um, so pretty unusual. Everything's enclosed, um, and it's it, it you know this version supports the uh, shorty battery on the side. The original 1.0 kind of had a saddle pack configuration. So uh, changes from the 1.0 uh, are that it's basically got a shorter chassis. I think it's like two and a half millimeters shorter. A little more handling, a little more steering that way. Um, it's got the you know the side mounted shorty instead of the saddle packs as I mentioned. It's got 12 and a half degree uh, aluminum block, aluminum caster blocks in there. Um, it's got revised sort of belt tunnels. Um, it's got a revised front end, so it's it's uh, the arms and the pivot block and stuff are a little bit different. Um, it's got uh, sway bars included. It's got a different body. You know, it's kind of this uh, cab four design body. Um, I think that covers most of it. And, and the one big one is it comes with gear diffs standard. So. The original 1.0 had the ball diffs. This one's got the gear diffs. Uh, that was a big change, um, especially trying to fit gear diffs in uh, a vehicle made for ball diffs. It was a little bit challenging for them, I'm sure. But, um, it, you know, worked out really well. So, um, front and rear gear diffs, no center diff. It's got uh, basically a slipper system in the center. Um, I think somebody was making, like, I forgot who it was, but some of you actually made a, a, a center diff for this, but it never really caught on. So, you know, pretty much everyone's running a, a slipper. And it seems like a lot of the guys nowadays with high traction are, are going to slippers anyways. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of an overview of the vehicle. You know, the, the design harkens back to the double X4, which, you know, if you look at the pictures, has basically the exact same layout. It's, it's the belt tunnels, uh, belts, everything looks identical. Um, basically, it's got a, a sort of eccentric uh, motor mount like the Double X4 to help you set gear mesh. Um, you know, kind of nice system actually. I like it a lot. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the vehicle. Uh, this one's in particular set up as it's a mod car, I guess. Um, it's got a 10 and a half in there. I, I normally run like a 13 and a half. I'm just kind of messing around with that. Um, but electronics wise, I have this random like atomic 10 and a half motor. Uh, Savax 1258 TG uh, electronics for the ESC. I've got a Hobby Wing uh, XR10 Just Stock actually. Uh, so this thing only goes down to sort of 10 and a half, 13 and a half uh, turn motors. And then I've got a Sanwa receiver ARX, I think 481. That's what, it, what that is, a little receiver. And I got my little. Uh, timing sensor here on the on the side. Um, one thing about the timing uh, the transponder, you would think you'd want to mount it here on the chassis, but I actually found that the servo interfered with it, so it didn't really pick up well. And you can't mount it on top of this because the body comes down so low. So a lot of people actually run it here on the side. Uh, pretty typical location. Um, so that's it, electronics-wise. Um, so let's kind of talk about my thoughts on the car, um, starting with the design, or let's start with the build actually. 
So the build of this vehicle, you know, follows pretty typical TLR uh, standards. Um, the manual is quite good. It's an international version, um, which means it's multi-language, which actually really means it likes to use symbols for stuff. So, you know, sort of exclamation marks and, uh, you know, little pictures of grease and motor or thread lock, um, that kind of thing. So um, the manual is, you know, pretty good. It, it, it read uh pretty well and you know and everything went together uh quite nice they didn't have any real issues with the build um the one thing i would recommend though is definitely go through uh frank roots um build video on the gear discs the gear discs on this thing are are you know a little bit tricky i would say um they have a video on the team losi racing facebook site um so definitely check that out he's got some good tips and tricks uh, and you'll, you definitely want to put that together uh, after you've seen the video. There, there are a couple things about like the set screws and motor spray and that sort of thing that you, you want to see. But overall, you know, no real issues with the manual. I didn't find too many real issues. There's, there's one where a screw is mislabeled. Um, another one where like a, it, it didn't label, you know, maybe a screw was missing. Like you're, you're supposed to put it in there, but it didn't actually tell you that in the manual. The other thing I would say about the manual is that there's one section in the rear um, that kind of talks about setting the the belt tension on the on basically the rear belt tension and the side belt tension it's got this one really long chart that makes it seem like you know if you if you use the zero side belt tensioner then your you know rear, rear belt's going to be like super tight which is not actually true this, this chart in my opinion is at, at the best case sort of confusing and the worst case just flat out wrong um, you know, just, just go with these charts up here about the side and rear and realize that they're interconnected. So if you, you know, tighten the side belt tension, then you're going to loosen the rear, which is kind of obvious if, if you see the way it's interconnected. But this chart is kind of confusing. It makes it seem like you can't actually get correct belt tension um, if you use particular side belt tensions. Um, so that, you know, is the only complaint I really have about the manual. Uh, the parts organization is well laid out, just, you know, typical TLR, you have a bag A, B, C, D, whatever. Um, you, you know, only have the parts that you need in that one particular bag. So as soon as you're done with that step, you're done with the bag. So you don't really have to keep parts lying around um, from earlier bags and that sort of thing. Um, you know, everything is pre-cut, you know, the parts don't come on part trees. Um, they just come in bags. The body is pre-cut, uh, which is quite nice. I did have a little bit of issue of the the uh, overspray film kind of peeling off while I was painting, um, but you know, pre-cut body, awesome. I love that. Um, the wing is pre-cut. So the build all together, uh, you know, went together pretty well. You know, things are a little bit intricate with all these different <laughs> parts. Um, you know, they kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. But I had no issues with, you know, how everything fit. You know, the, the manufacturing is, it was spot on with this vehicle. No, no issues with turnbuckles, shocks, you know, nothing. Um, it all went together quite nicely. So overall, I'd, I'd give the build, you know, an 8 out of 10. The, you know, the, the trickiness of the gear discs, I would say, you know, maybe loses a point or two. The, the manual maybe loses a point. Um, but all together, you know, a very nice build. It was fun. Um, certainly different and it may be not the easiest build for someone who's never built a kit before you know four-wheel drive buggies in general are, are a little more complicated than two-wheel drive buggies but um, you know a good build overall so 8 out of 10 uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the design of the vehicle so uh, you know let's look at this thing it's uh, nothing you've ever seen before it's it's nothing any other manufacturer tries to go with so the the general design is and and you kind of look at this and you kind of see what they were thinking back in the day so you know as i mentioned this comes from like the double x4 uh which came out i think in the early 2000s maybe 2004 2005 somewhere around there but uh you can see they they have had these general idea they're like okay well we want belt drives because belts you know are whatever smoother whatever whatever reason they, they went with belts um and then they decide well okay we need to have the diff in the front and the rear of the vehicle that makes sense so that means we need the belts kind of you know going straight down the center of the vehicle well if we do that then where's the motor going to go well the motor you know we don't want it off to the side and so we want it in the middle um, kind of centralized well that means we need three belts okay they're like all right we got a front belt rear belt a side belt all right well now that we got all these belts we want them enclosed because 
you know, we don't want dirt to get into the belts and foul them up. So they enclosed everything. And they're like, okay, well, now we got these belt tunnels in place. Where are we going to put the servo? And they're like, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll just stick it in the middle, and that way it's lined up with the front. Okay. Uh, and you just see kind of these weird... Uh, <laughs> design attributes of this vehicle. I mean, I've never seen a vehicle with the servo kind of like this, and you know, the, the kind of the steering rack goes through the belts here in the front. Um, so overall, just just you know, a, a strange design. Um, you know, in, in some ways, I mean, it's it's actually kind of grotesquely beautiful in, in my opinion, just from an engineering standpoint. It's it's just weird, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of neat, and it and it definitely works. You know, there's nothing. Uh, about the design that makes it drive poorly at all. It actually drives quite well. So the design is uh, strange, a um, bit cumbersome, and, and it obviously makes it uh, more difficult to work on. You know, there is complexity with this vehicle because it's kind of the belts are the centerpiece of the vehicle and everything's kind of built around it which means if you need to get to the drivetrain uh, you end up taking parts, you know, shock towers and uh, covers and and actually the servo you have to remove to get to this belt cover is it's, it's got weird things like that going on so um, you definitely have to disassemble things uh, when you're working on this vehicle so uh, you know I have to give the design a 3 out of 10 I, I, I think it's a below average design in the sense that um, it's it's quite complex um, kind of fiddly kind of hard to work on I mean definitely hard to work on it's not, nothing is exactly easy to go to um, so Design wise, three out of 10. Um, you know, it, it's it's a 12 year old design at this point. You know, I suspect at some point they'll eventually go to something different, but um, as long as this thing's winning races, I guess it, it works. Everything's uh, for the most part metric. Um, there are a couple of non metric uh, ball bearings here in the, 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 I don't know what you call this, the lay shaft or jack shaft is, is riding on. You know, TLR always uses, you know, non-metric uh, ball studs for their servos. Um, so it's, you know, 99% metric, but not completely. Um, so let's kind of go on to the next category, which is performance. And uh, this buggy drives really well. Um, I have the kit set up still uh, on this vehicle, actually. Um, I, I've in five months actually never changed anything. The only thing I've added is actually this front clicker. So, uh, you know, both driven cars have a clicker option. It's kind of testing it. That's something I actually will probably keep on there, but uh, uh, it's kind of nice to have that option. So performance wise, uh, it, it accelerates really well. It actually has this two pad slipper system where the front or the rear can slip depending on, you know, traction or, you know, how, how the motor and tires are moving. Uh, which is actually an advantage, I think. Um, I was driving a Yokomo yesterday, which is another belt uh, drive car, but it only has a, a single slipper where either the entire uh, car slips or you know they have full traction. And, and I, I think there is a bit of a difference in how the power is applied with this sort of dual uh, dual pad slipper system, where you know things can kind of work independently and, and give you a little more uh, granularity in, in terms of traction. So it accelerates quite well. Um, nothing you know difficult um, in the way it, it puts down the power. It actually, I think, applies the power quite nicely. Uh, steering is is quite neutral, balanced. I'd say you know good corner entry, mid corner exit. Air, steering wise, um, you know no real complaints. It's not set up quite as aggressively, I would say, as some of the other vehicles, you know, I have a B64 that I've been driving. Um, definitely different driving characteristics. This one's a little more neutral, you know, kind of more smooth. You know, that, that's another word I would use in terms of how this vehicle drives. The belts are very smooth, they're very quiet. Um, it, it turns in quite predictably. Um, it actually jumps through the air quite nicely. I, I think it jumps and lands quite well. The, the shocks are very good on this vehicle. Um, especially when you run like a, a different, like the AE car, you know, without the machine pistons and bushings and stuff like that. I mean, you can, you can tell, um, this vehicle definitely lands more plushly. The only thing, uh, performance wise, I would say, um, is a bit of a, you know, dislike is it doesn't really like to land on one wheel. Um, you know, if, if you kind of miss jump and, and land poorly on a wheel, um, like you know one corner of the vehicle it does tend to kind of upset the vehicle and possibly flip um, 
that, that's actually part of the reason I was testing out this slipper, I'm sorry, the one-way clicker, is it, it kind of makes it land a little more smoothly. Um, but overall, you know, easy to drive vehicle. Um, you know, I, I think it's a great performer. Um, set up a little more, you know, on a slightly on the conservative side, I would say. Um, that's pretty typical of TLR vehicles. They, they're kind of set up more for running a lot of laps consistently. And I think it's a very consistent vehicle rather than like, you know, flat out hot laps, um, like super aggressive, uh, you know, punch style. Uh, vehicles, but you know all vehicles you can obviously uh, set up to your liking. I happen to just really enjoy the the kit setup for this vehicle. I think it's really easy to drive. Um, this is my son's main uh, race vehicle, um, just because he seems to you know drive this vehicle better than most. Um, I think it's a really easy to drive vehicle. So performance wise, you know, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 because I, I think it drives awesome. Like out of the box, throw this down, start running laps and, and you'll love the vehicle. I, th I think it's great. Um, no real complaints. It has all the adjustments if, if you need to make anything, you know, any squat, kick up, whatever. Uh, actually, I'm not sure there's kick up adjustment, but um, I think the, the kit setup is really, really good. Th this is a vehicle they've kind of refined over time, I would say, you know, over the last 12 years, they've been kind of slowly tweaking, adjusting things. And, and basically whatever they learn about how to make this vehicle drive better, they basically have thrown into the box. So you kind of have the, the full evolution of the, the low C four wheel drive buggy platform. So uh, that covers performance. Um, oh, one other quick thing I want to say is, you know, the, the clicker, uh, what that does is basically make it act as sort of a two-wheel drive or, or like, you know, semi two-wheel drive when you're braking. So it allows the front basically to spin faster than the rear uh, under braking or let's say in the air. Anytime you basically have the front wheels uh, going faster than the motor's going. Um, so uh, it's adjustable. You know, you can adjust the tension on that um, to get as much or as little effect as you want. Um, I, I think most people are not going to like it just because it, it you know, breaking under, an, at least in the high tracking surfaces, you know, four-wheel drive is going to perform better. You're going to be able to brake harder later, all that kind of thing. Um, but landing-wise, it actually helps a little bit in kind of smoothing out how it lands um, overall. So uh, braking-wise, you know, it's, it's tunable, which is <laughs> pretty unusual for this type of vehicle. Um, so the next category I want to talk about is durability. And uh, durability wise, in five months, um, I've broken two things. I've bent a front drive shaft, um, and uh, there's the front pivot block, which is uh, underneath this cover here, underneath this bumper, but uh, it's basically what the hinge pins go through and the arms mount to. So the, the only two things I've broken are that pivot block and the, the front drive shaft. And overall, you know, I really haven't had uh, durability issues with this vehicle. Um, it, uh, I wouldn't say it's, you know, indestructible. People have definitely broken parts on this, but for me, the, the pivot block's really the one weak point of the vehicle. Um, you'll want to stock up on spares with that thing. You know, like I said, in five months, one pivot block isn't bad. I don't, I don't consider it fragile or anything like that, but that is probably the part that will break. If, if you smash into a wall in the, with the front end, it, you know, your arms are not going to break. <laughs> it's the pivot block that's going to break. Um, arms have held up beautifully. So everything else seems pretty durable to me. Um, I no issues, um, but stock on a, you know, a couple of those pivot blocks. Um, the other thing I would say durability wise is for some odd reason, I still have not figured this out. If you slam into something really hard with the front end and you know, like one wheel, something in the steering gets tweaked and I wasn't sure if it was like the steering leg, so I kind of beefed that up. Um, I have a bigger turnbuckle on there or it might be this AB horn sort of mounting to the steering rack. Um, it basically uses kind of a, like a square peg from the, the steering rack up to this uh, AB horn is what it's called. Um, so I upgraded that to aluminum, but I'm not sure that's that's the issue. So um, I'm not sure it's a real issue, but things can seem to kind of get tweaked steering wise. And when you re loosen everything back up and tighten everything back down, then you know that seems to fix it. But I, I haven't gotten to the bottom of that. I'm not really sure what what's causing that. Um, but uh, so durability wise, you know, I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it an average score just because um, if you look at the market, you know, you've got the X-ray, which is 
extremely sturdy. You've got the hot bodies D413. That's that's a tank, you know, that's nearly indestructible. And then you've got like the B64D, which in my opinion is probably more fragile than this car. Um, just in my limited experience, I haven't had that buggy that long, but you know, I've broken arms, you know, people break bulkheads. Um, I don't think over time that's probably gonna prove to be quite as durable, but you know, I don't really know for sure yet. That, that buggy's only been out a few weeks. Um, and then the Kyoshi is definitely more fragile. So uh, I, I'd say this is kind of middle of the road. It's not unbreakable like some of the other ones. It's, it's not fragile like some of the other ones. So you know, durability wise, I'm gonna rate this a five out of 10. Uh, the next category I want to talk about is value. So uh, value to me is is really uh, what you get for what you pay for. So this kit retails for three ninety nine, um, which is the cheapest of of every major manufacturer. Um, so you look at Kyosho, Associated, um, uh, excuse me, uh, Hot Bodies, and um, uh, what was the last one I was talking about? I can't remember. Oh, X-Ray. Th this is the only kit under $400. Um, that's a, it's a good deal. I mean, there's no other kit in this price range. Most of them are in the high 400s, maybe over 500. Um, you know, the Yokomo's more as well. Uh, so value-wise, I think, um, you know, this is really good. Uh, you get all the parts you really need, you know, um, really nice shocks pre-cut body, you get wheels in the box, um, you know, all them hinge pins in the back, aluminum camber blocks front and rear. Um, you know, the, the one thing I wish it came with was a uh, aluminum wheel hexes. It comes with plastic wheel hexes in the rear. You'll want to get aluminum ones because the plastic ones are just lame. Um, pre-cut wing, um, sway bars. So it's it's got really a lot. It, it honestly has everything that you need. You know, the only things I would say is get the aluminum hexes, and you need you want at least the aluminum servo horn, but you, you need that on every vehicle. So um, value wise, I think you get uh, as much as anybody else, and then some in some cases, and at, at the lowest price. So value wise, this vehicle cannot be beat. You know. I have to rate it a 10 out of 10 because um, it's the cheapest vehicle, it's one of the highest performing vehicles, and um, it, it really needs nothing out of the box, right? Get some aluminum hexes, you don't even have to buy wheels. So value-wise, 10. The next category I wanna talk about is support, and what I mean by that is basically, you know, when you buy this thing, can you get parts, can you get setup sheets? Will people help you out if, if you have an issue? Um, and, and TLR is really good about this, you know, as I mentioned in other videos, they actually have uh, very good online support, you know, they're in the forums, they're on Facebook, they're answering questions, they're doing build videos, um, you can call them up, uh, they have setup sheets, you know, uh, obviously their buggies are going to have more setup sheets than say their you know short course truck or something like that but um, you know overall the, the support is very high um, TLR is probably one of the the better companies in this respect um, at least here in the United States so uh, I'm gonna give them an 8 out of 10 support so I, I think that pretty much covers the vehicle um, you know, overall, you know, my conclusion is it, it drives really well. It, it's, it's got a little bit more of a, you know, smooth, easy drive, balanced, neutral, whatever you want to call it, uh, set up out of the box than uh, my B64. The B64 is definitely more aggro, uh, on the edge, um, you know, like steering for days. This one's a little more easy to drive, balanced. Um, so it's, it's a good performer. Um, Really, the dislikes are obviously it's it's it can be a pain to work on. There's no getting around it. I actually threw up a video of how long it takes to get to the spur gear, which is basically in the heart of the beast right here. Um, this middle cover has to be uh, you know sort of done last after the front cover. So you basically have to remove like the servo, the front cover, the entire front arm, um, the motor uh, cover, and then you can actually replace this. Uh, side cover to actually get to the spur gear. So you definitely don't want to roach a, a spur gear in this guy. Um, and so, you know, the, the dislikes are, you know, kind of obvious. It, it's hard. It's a hard vehicle to work on. Um, it's durable, but, you know, changing anything with the driveline belts and stuff is a pain. Um, it takes a while to, to change some of the things. Um, you know, I kind of compare this sort of an Italian sports car, you know, this is kind of the Ferrari of the RC world in my opinion. 
it looks good it drives good um, but it's kind of a pain to work on you know um, you'll definitely have you know sort of uh, I wouldn't say call the car high maintenance but um, you know definitely uh, you need a power screwdriver and, and a parts uh, tray so uh, other than that you know the car the car is really good it, I, I actually really enjoy it a lot um, it's probably a vehicle it's actually my favorite vehicle um, you know kind of in a weird sick way but I, I really love this car I think it's kind of a, a really neat design um, certainly unusual in its class you, it can't be accused of copying anybody so uh, this is a vehicle I plan to keep for a long time you know as long as uh, TLR you know supports it I'll, I'll probably keep this car um, so yeah that's basically my conclusion um, hope you enjoyed this vehicle you know this one's kind of a long one um, but please subscribe if you haven't you know this channel is you know growing I'm, I'm hoping to provide more and more videos uh, as time goes on so look for another video soon and uh, take care guys bye now